What's up, Fight Man? Brett Okamoto here from the Fly Browns podcast on this week's episode. So myself and Brian Campbell got into all of the drama between Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. Is this fight happening? We also talked to TJ Dillashaw and Dwayne Ludwig. Tune in. Pardon the interruption. I'm Mike Wilbon. Terrible news told. Monopoly is removed the thimble from its game. What's your favorite piece? Tony Kornheiser. Side piece. Oh, funny man now. Funny, funny, funny man. You no, know, laughed that loud. Jeff laughed that loud at that. Funny man. No, I thought funny that was uh, good. At, at side piece. I, you know, I remember the thimble, but honestly, it's been so long since Monopoly. I played. How's the culture? I don't remember the other. It's out. It was a rage 120 years ago. It's, it's out. Still, it's still a good game if you give it a chance. <laughs> Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, trade rumors, bullpen relocation, and an angry Terrell Owens. But we begin today with a report by our colleague Ed Werder that Tony Romo is expecting to be released by the Dallas Cowboys rather than traded. In that same report, Romo expresses the belief that he can start two or three more seasons. Now, Romo will be 37 next season. Will Bond, do you see the Cowboys releasing Tony Romo? Sure. Yes. Yeah, Tony Romo wants, and I think just on seniority and the way he's comported himself, not just with the Dallas Cowboys, but as a member of the NFL, I think he deserves that chance. Just release him. You're not going to, he's not in your plans anymore. And release and him. You can't trade him because nobody tried to trade him. They've already done that. Nobody no one's him. biting on the trade. Right. So you release him and then. I think 15 teams will be interested in Tony Romo because this and is a time in which there's not enough quarterbacks to go around. And I agree. And the, and the thing about it is they won't trade for him because he breaks his bones all the time, because he's brittle. But you put him out on the open market, and he's going to have a lot of people right. angling for him. Here is the problem. It is he breaks his bones all the yeah. time. So when he says he can start two or no, three more can't. seasons, he can't. no, he can't. He can't finish two well, or three more seasons because yeah. he goes out there, and the first game he's out there, Something breaks in him. I know all these guys, and this starts with Tom Brady. They all think they can play till 50 because they're in this wonderful shape they are. Well, Tom they Brady has care. shown he can be, but Tom, Tom Brady, he's the exception. Doesn't get hit either. His team is smart enough to put a line out there and a philosophy around him that doesn't allow him to get hit. He gets hit like five times Dallas a year. Dallas Cowboys have a great offensive line. Okay, but, but the Dallas Cowboys, but he's got hit. Romo plays a different style of football. Tony Romo, you would say, is a better athlete, just an yes. athlete, than Tom sure. Brady. And sure. so he thinks he can do the things that he wants to do in his can. career where he didn't get hurt, but now he's out for weeks and months. See, you know what? I could see a really good team. And I, I, Denver is a perfect spot because I think they can go to the Super Bowl, Bowl with Tony Romo if he stays healthy, one of the biggest ifs in football. Yeah. But I think if you look at teams like Cincinnati or Baltimore, Kansas City, that have established starting mm-hmm. quarterbacks, why wouldn't you hire Tony Romo in case something went wrong? Why does he have to start from day one? Why, why exactly? Sure. Sure. Why wouldn't you keep somebody that good around when you need him? Unless you know, Tony Romo doesn't want one. one. So I don't, you know, he's going to want to start so, okay. every snap. Does he go to Chicago? God help him if he does. Look, I hope okay. he does, but for his sake, no. Because right. okay. they don't have the team built for Tony Romo to go into the playoffs, much less deep into the playoffs. Enough of your NFL, Tony. Basketball's on the stage now. James Harden and Russell Westbrook were atop the marquee again last night. Each recorded a triple-double. Each scored 35. Westbrook won, Harden lost, which has to count for something, right? Tony Westbrook has 27 of these things, which puts him close to on pace to catch Oscar in 1962. Harden in Mike D'Antoni's offensive system has totally remade himself and his team, which a lot of folks think could reach the conference finals. As we head into the All-Star break, Mr. Kornheiser, yeah. who deserves to be named the NBA's MVP? Right, stay with me for a while, because I'm going to draw a distinction between the most outstanding player and the most valuable uh, player. Okay. To me, Russell Westbrook is the most outstanding, most spectacular, most compelling player in the league this year. But, here is the but that is coming. Russell Westbrook's team has won 32 games. James Harden's team has won 40. To me, most valuable also implies you have an effect on the people around you. And the league, if I have the vote, my vote is for James Harden. I'm afraid mine is too at this point. Thank Why are you afraid? I want to vote at this point. Because I have what? felt that Westbrook does something that is harder. Westbrook has less around him, particularly since Ennis Cantor selfishly slammed his hand into a chair okay. and took himself out of the team okay. for a couple of months. And so Westbrook has those 32 wins, Tony, they demand Russell Westbrook's best 
most fiery self at all times. Harden can have slightly off night, even though they lost last night, and his team can win. Westbrook's can't. I think I would vote for Harden. Now, thankfully, that ballot is not due in until, like, April 10th or something like that, because I do have a vote. Both then I'm going to take this serious. Both teams lost very important players. Kevin Durant is more important than anybody else that was lost. But Dwight Howard was relative, Man, relatively important. Him. Here's what James Harden is it. doing. Okay. He's averaging 11 assists a game. There was no bigger ball hog in the league, None. including Westbrook, None. than Harden. 11 assists a game. That's plus four over last That's year. That's stunning. He is plus two in rebounds. He is, unlike Westbrook, he has remade his game in a different way, and his team is more the beneficiary to me, which yeah. is why I vote for him. We'll stay with the NBA. The Boston Celtics and the Chicago Bulls will play tonight in Chicago in each team's last game before the interminable All-Star break. The teams collide as trade rumors engulf them both. It is said that the Bulls may be in the market to trade Jimmy Butler, their leading scorer. And the Celtics have the Nets' number one draft choice, which looks like it might be the number one overall pick. Wilbon, is this a trade you would make? If I'm the Bulls, no. Jimmy Butler's my best player. He's Where are you going with people him? still mostly fill that arena to, to, to see that team play. He, him and Dwayne Wade. Is there an upside with that team? Uh, Tony, it, it doesn't appear to be this season. Right. I still think those two guys can figure out a way to get to the playoffs, even in the seventh spot, <coughs> which avoids Cleveland in the first round and they own Toronto, which could finish as high as second. I don't know about the Wizards of Boston. But if I'm the Boston Celtics, yes, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. If they, Depending on what i got to give up. Jimmy Butler, let me just mention this stat. The Bulls with Jimmy Butler. Are eight and six against LeBron James in the regular season in the since 2012. Tony, I mean, he, I'm not. No one is a LeBron stopper. None right. of that stuff. But if you're the Boston Celtics and you know you want to go against that team yeah. in the conference finals, you want Jimmy Butler. Yes, he's an All Star. Jimmy Butler is like a high value asset. Yes. He's a really known player. Um, to me, again, and if I'm Boston, I make the trade in a heartbeat because. Even if it's the number one overall pick, who is that going to be exactly? Is anybody sure? Okay. Who, who's it's gonna not be? Anthony Davis, and it's not Steph Curry. No. In other words, if they were out there, and I know right. Steph Curry wasn't drafted anywhere near that, but if you knew he was going to be this good, he would be the overall number one. So I'm going to make that pick to take the bird in hand. If you're born. Yesterday, yes. yes. Yesterday I talked about the fact that there's Cleveland, there's everybody else. And yesterday I said by getting Serge Ibaka, that it seemed to me Toronto had vaulted to the top of everybody else. If you got Jimmy Butler, yeah, you're lost. You're way ahead. Yeah. You're way ahead. And the team that's getting lapped, the team that's getting left behind is the Washington Wizards. Right? If this well, happens, they mean, get left you behind. You don't consider the return of the lineup of Eon, Mahimi, Jan, I don't. But maybe I don't think it helps for everybody else. Otherwise, they don't have a bench, and they do seem to be getting left behind in terms of the acquisitions. Yeah, yeah. If you're the Bulls, you get rid of Jimmy Butler? If I get rid of Jimmy Butler to go for the number one overall, I have said that whole era... The, the Rose, Rose it's, that's Tim's, done. We're Butler, done. We're done now. Noah, all done. of them. Oh. Maybe do it. Very sad to me. For a while, Terrell Owens was able to calmly deal with not being voted in the post football. For a day and a half. For, no, it was longer than that. Two but days. no longer, Tom. T.O. says he's lost all respect for a selection process that is allowed to include examination of his character, whether he undermined teams with his behavior. Quote, just because I had some disagreements with some coaches or players, that doesn't mean I was a locker room cancer as they would have it. Close quote. Tony, does Teal belong in the Hall of Fame right now or not? Once again, bear with me as I draw a distinction if I'm a voter. I'm not a voter. You were a voter. I never was. But I would say that I draw a distinction between someone of bad character and someone who was a bad teammate. I could point and you could point to people like Lawrence Taylor and Charles Haley. And we could give chapter and verse that would indicate perhaps they had flawed characters. Yes. But I would still vote for them because, to me, that is totally off the field. If you tell me someone's a bad teammate, if they drove a wedge between factions on a team, if they that required happened. such special treatment that they made a quarterback insane or a coach yeah. insane, to me, that's still on the field. And I would not vote for T.O. Well, there, there are clearly people who have taken that position in that room. How about you? I took that position at one time, particularly as it pertain to Donovan McNabb and the Philadelphia Eagles. And it seems like they should have made more than one trip to the Super Bowl had that not happened. But, Tony, I think there's this exception, even as I believe what you just stated. There are times when your statistical contribution 
And here I go now with analytics, and you know I steer clear of that as often as well. I think there I mean. are times when your individual contributions make you eligible, particularly with the position of receiver. We're not talking quarterback here. I think they make you, and they overwhelm this other distraction you bring really? to your team. Really? And I think T.O., I had a conversation with T.O. I ran into him, and he said, tell me the truth. Would you have voted for me? And he said, I know you've been critical. I said, yes. I would have voted you know, for you. Well, it's good for I him would. that he didn't run into me because I would have <laughs> voted for him. I know that. I, he will get in the Hall of Fame, and he should get in the Hall of Fame, but not yet. Not now. To me, like not, no, because I do think that he was a bad teammate. You, you know, you stood for Donovan. I did. I time still do. Time again. And by the way, T.O. can but say he was whatever in San he wants. He was right? in Dallas. He's still by his quarterback. Your boy, that's my quarterback. By, huh? by then, he had sown the seeds of discontent. The Chicago Cubs are one of the last teams to have their bullpens right down the baseline in foul territory, but not for long. <coughs> Citing, quote, player safety, the Cubs are moving their bullpens, bullpens to underneath the left field bleachers. Of course, the Cubs will put seats in the area. Yeah. The bullpens are vacating for player safety. What about Wrigley's your account? Are you for this or against it? Against it. I'm for things that destroy or take away from the aesthetic appeal of Wrigley Field. That, that's my thing. I've been going there since I was nine years old. So you're not for things that do that. I'm not for things right. that do that. Anything that takes away from that, I'm against that. And you're going to put this bullpen. Now, first of all, if you're a pitcher, you can't even get used to the conditions. Suppose it's incredibly windy or cold or sunny or something. You can't even simulate the conditions that you're about to go into because you're inside. No, Major League Baseball should be against this. And you can't have a window to the world of the bullpen. I am for Everything else that has been done very carefully with great consideration by the Ricketts family and Cubs executives to Wrigley Field, I'm for all of it. The new scoreboard, the additions, the aesthetic changes, all of it. First time, I'm against this. This is interesting to me because this is really old school <laughs> where the bullpens are so close to the field. And you, only four ballparks out of 30. You take a line drive down there and you get killed. But you got to put somebody extra. Well, you have to do that. You've got to put people extra who are watching the bats all the yeah. time. So I'm okay if you move a bullpen, but you've got to keep the bullpen in the light. You've got to keep yes. it outdoors. A pick. You, yes. you shouldn't have to watch the game on TV to know it's time <laughs> to go to the bullpen. So I, And I don't know the, the geography there. I don't know if there's room no. anywhere else there's and no what room. they would have to do. There's no other room. I tend to find myself against this, but I, I will say this about baseball. And there's been big changes in the last 20 years of baseball with all the netting. And the netting's there for a reason. I mean, safety is a big deal. These yeah. line drives are coming at 90 miles yeah. an hour. Tony, then you know what? Put the bullpen out at Murphy's. I know you don't, you don't know what that I means. I do not. But people who are watching in the 312 and the 847, right. they will know what this means. No. Put, it should be outdoors. It should be Put outdoors. Let's take a break. Coming up. Fun. Coming Duke up. Duke is probably the best college basketball team in the country. Why they have all your faculty if you've been coming there for Murphy's? Is snoozing on the bus a good look or a bad look for Phil? It's a great look. It's a great look. He looks homeless. Some people would argue he should be. <laughs> I'm Eric Caramel. The latest fantasy social baseball podcast, the Arkham City Talk Rock Night is done. Kyle's former catching, Jose Plaza playing, Alex Reyes relieving, not really, but so the character on the head. Time for the game that comes close to insulting our intelligence, something or nothing. Mike, what's the first? Let's get the first with Tony something or nothing. Andrew Wiggins dunk last night. You'll see the dunk coming up. The dunk is nothing. Everybody Ooh. in the NBA nice. can dribble in and can dunk. Uh. What is something is the way Wiggins has been playing recently. Since Zach Levine tore his ACL, Wiggins is averaging 31 points. He's gone over 42 times in a row, plus he's shooting 54%. The problem is... Minnesota in those seven games is three and four. I would tell you, Mike, that Minnesota is the most disappointing team in the wow. entire NBA this year. Wow. I would say this. I agree. Andrew Wiggins' uh, progression is something. Even yeah. though the team hasn't yet caught up really with him. You losing Zach Levine hurts as well. But, Tony, a dunk... A dunk anymore? Mm. Maybe you and I are just old men. Old well, we are men old. on a cane. And you know what? Crutch. Well, I'm not on that. And, and, and this is and no we, country for old men anymore. I guess it is. It is not. But the dunk was nice, but it's probably... It's a, we know since he was in high school, it's a dunk. he was going to be a Everybody dunk. can dunk like his dad. <laughs> something or nothing, Duke's sixth straight win. This is not just something. This is bigly something. 
The six in a row includes three ranked teams at Notre Dame, North Carolina, and at Virginia last night. Pay careful attention, Mike, to what I'm saying. Right now, Duke is the best team. Right now, today, is the best team in college basketball in the entire country. You go through six in a row in the ACC where there's a million ranked teams. Blue UVA out in the second half. Big deal. It's a, kind of a little deal. It's kind of a little something. This is Duke. They don't play for the regular season. I know they got to get ready, and there's a lead up to this. And the way you get to a number one seed, which is usually the easiest path to the Final Four, is to play well now, to get yourself going, to build your resume. These are impressive victories, but it's Duke. And it's also early. But they get We're still in back. mid-February, and there are times to get into a little pump. And, and that's why I said right <laughs> now, and only right now, do I think they're the best I college you were going to jump on that big bandwagon as soon as I saw that game last night. Something or nothing, Vince Young's comeback. Vince Young is now 33 years old. The last time he played in the NFL was 2011. Long time ago. He hired Lee Steinberg, who used to be a very big deal agent. Some people thought Jerry Maguire was patterned after Lee Steinberg. I I'm just going to tell you, there's a lot of water over the dam for both of these guys. Now, there's a spring league, you know, with, with Canada football players. There's Canada. I would root for Vince Young to get another shot. But on balance, I'd have to tend this is nothing. I think this is really something as well. At 33 years old, he could go up and play. The talks apparently have begun with Saskatchewan. Good. Go play in the CFL, which I think we both agree is the closest thing you're going to get. It'd be like a minor league. And you know what? There is precedent for people going to Canada and coming to the NFL and being great more and more. Not after they sat out for six years. That's a long time. That's why it's a little really something. A little something. I'd like to see Vince Young do this, wouldn't you? Yes. But... <laughs> I tell you what, here, you know what, you know what? Chance, what's going to happen first? Tiger make the cut in the major or Vince Young make the NFL team? Neither is going to happen ever. No, Tiger will make the cut in the major first. Something or nothing feel riding the bus. Okay, now look at this. This is a picture of what? This is Phil Jackson riding a public bus? They don't have throwing chairs on New York City public buses. He's a, a public bus in a regular seat. But he's not taking Uber Black like Will Bond. And look at those When was the last shoes. time that you, Mr. New York, took a city bus? I don't remember. When was the so last you're time? not of the people. No. And I have claim to be. When was the last time you took a bus in the United States of America? A few years ago. I was what happened? Sixth Avenue. What happened? It was raining. I didn't have an umbrella. And the tough part was I didn't know how to pay for it. It's not like it was when you right. and I were young. Well, you, money you got in. on, you put you yeah. put coins in a jar, essentially. I, I didn't know how to ride the bus. I'm pathetic. I think this is something, and I think this may be the bus that Phil <laughs> do Carmelo undress <laughs> call. Yeah. Well, I mean, only in New York can you even do that. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I didn't even know in New York who Phil was. I love Phil Jackson. This is big. Is it Great. something or not? It's something. Absolutely. It's, that's it. <laughs> Let's take one last break. And he appears to be asleep at home. <laughs> Still to come, will Will Bond win <laughs> against Gonzaga nope. for the third time in a row? No way. Who's that kid you like there? Oh, the, guard, the point guard. What's man, his name? God. You don't even know his name. I just said his name. What? And the Draymond Green oh, deserve to get tossed last night. As they say Williams in Hamilton, Goss. what's my name? Williams Goss. What's his first name? He didn't need a first name. He's oh, known by two names. <laughs> I gave you two names. <laughs> Williams <laughs> Goss. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yo, everybody get up. Everybody get up. Everybody needs to understand that I'm more than simply a hype man for this rap group. Just like Geico is more than just a company that can save you money. Geico also has fast and friendly claim service, so they can help you when you need it most. And while I do love being a hype man, I also love reading for children's audio books. Like Little Bo B, she lost a sheep, and she don't know where to find them. Yo, Geico, expect great savings and a whole lot more. Happy time, people. Happy 75th birthday, Richard Williams. His manner was off-putting, his style was in your face, and he took a lot of shots, many of them completely deserved. And he should be congratulated for producing yeah. two of the greatest he tennis should. players in American history, who at preposterously advanced ages are still playing great tennis and are still crowd favorites wherever they go. And they were like 11 and 9. He said, Venus is going to be great. She's going to win championships. And Serena's going to be better. He said that when they were like 11 and 9. Right. Happy anniversary, Alex Rodriguez. On this day, 13 years ago, Bud Selig approved your trade to the Yankees. A-Rod's Yankee career was checkered with drug use and inevitably discouraging comparisons to Derek Cheetah. 
This weekend, A-Rod will become an instructor at Yankee Spring Training Camp in Tampa for three days. A-Rod should be on TV all the time. A-Rod, Pete Rose, and Frank Thomas have a traveling show. I would want to listen to them all the time. Have he trails Draymond Green late in the second quarter last night. It appeared that both Kevin Durant and Draymond Green fouled Boogie Cousins on his way to the basket for an improbable layup. When the foul was assessed to Green, Green went predictably insane and was ejected. The Warriors were up by two at that point. Without Green, the Warriors went on a 22-0 run in the third quarter. 22-15 quarter, but Draymond Green's the emotion of that team. Yes. Even when he gets kicked out on a night like that, that's an important, integral element of the Golden State Warriors, and they all know it. He got two technicals. He can't get he got eight 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 eight. Now, why did they lose the championship last year? What is one of the reasons? Five, okay, like, are we, are we, can't have heading, are we heading down that path? Could be. They can't afford that. I don't care how good they are. Do you think they Draymond, have to have Draymond can, Green? Can he stop himself from doing that? I think he can. I think he can. No errors today. Let's go to the big finish. Let's do it. Anthony Davis says he's here to stay with the Pelicans. Is that a smart decision? I think it is. I, and I hope Del Demps can <coughs> just build around him. He's a great player. I don't want to see everybody leave small market. That's no good for the league. Melo is going to replace Kevin Love in the All-Star game because he deserves it. It's, it. That's not the question. It's an All-Star game. It's a, it's a show for the fans. He's a star. People want to see him. We can't go a day without talking about this. Well, Bradley Bradley Beal, Beal, Jackson, Bradley Beal in? It's a, it's, an, it's a show. Stop. You just don't want me to say this. Maryland beat Northwestern last night. Uh, You're still confident you'll make the tournament. Uh, they were hot. They were on fire, particularly Melo and Triple. I'm going to yep. tell you the same thing I would tell you during the Cubs rush. I'm hoping. But I'm going to tell you, hope. Max Scherzer may not be ready for opening day. He's got that lingering pain from a broken knuckle on his pitching hand. Is that a big deal? Huge deal. I love Max Scherzer. He's a bulldog. He's the best team. He's, he's the most day? competitive. Who, you, think, you think the Orkins could have... Get stopped. Don't go. They need, they need him. Last one. Gonzaga tries to make it 27-0. Hosting San Francisco tonight. You pick the lose all the time. What? I'm not going against my man Nigel Williams Goss. I'm not doing that. A lot of time. We're trying to do better the next time. I'm Tony Corner. San Francisco's pretty good too, Tony. But Gonzaga wins. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckle Hair. Check us out on iTunes. Yo, everybody get up. Everybody get up. Everybody needs to understand that I'm more than simply a hype man for this rap group. Just like Geico is more than just a company that can save you money. Geico also has fast and friendly claim service, so they can help you when you need it most. And while I do love being a hype man, I also love reading for children's audio books. Like Little Bo B. She lost the sheep and she don't know where to find them. Yo! Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. The NBA All-Star Game this Sunday. Here's Curry behind the back. Half-court heave on its way. And he takes it! <coughs> Coverage begins Sunday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.